A few days ago, India's Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal said that India is becoming a preferred destination for data centers. The surge of power which data centers cause can best be handled by a country like India because of our massive grid. So we are a preferred destination for data centers. Now, from a distance, it sounds like the kind of optimistic government statements we hear all the time. But when you zoom out and look at what's actually happening, this is a once in a decade kind of structural shift happening. Similar to how we exploited the IT boom in the 90s and early 2000s, this is the same moment for AI. And global companies have already invested over $40 billion in India to make that happen. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup news show. I'm Pankaj, your host, and you're watching Backstage with Millennials, a channel that's also part of Zero Dha's Zero One Network. And in today's video, we'll be answering a very simple but important question. Why is everyone suddenly building data centers in India? And why is this actually good for the country? See, right now, India generates close to 20% of the world's data. So basically, every UPI transaction, every video stream, every Aadhaar authentication, and every AI prompt, it all adds up to it. But here is the strange part. Despite producing so much data, India today hosts only about 3% of the world's data center capacity. So we produce 20% of the world's data, but we store only 3% of it. And a useful way to think about this is through an old analogy. For decades, India exported raw materials and imported finished goods. For example, iron ore would leave the country and steel would come back. Similarly, cotton would leave and textiles would return. The real value was mostly added elsewhere. And until now, the same thing was happening with data. India produced the raw data, things like user behavior, transaction, and all the content. But a lot of the processing, storage, and monetization, it all happened overseas. And data centers changed that equation. They let India process, store, and monetize data at home. And that's why global tech companies are suddenly lining up. Not because India is cheap, but because India is becoming unavoidable. And there are three big forces driving this shift. The first is sheer demand. India is the world's largest and most active market when it comes to AI adoption. We lead in the usage of all the AI apps in the market right now, both in terms of monthly active users and daily active users. And since data centers are the factories of the AI economy, we need them to be closer to us. The second force is government regulation. India's push for data localization did not happen overnight. It began around 2019 and was cemented with the Digital Personal Data Protection Act of 2023. And the message here is simple. Certain kinds of data must be stored and processed within the country. And this instantly makes domestic data center capacity not just useful, but essential. The third force is changing geopolitics. See, after COVID and the global supply chain shocks, companies are rethinking the concentration risk, basically relying on a handful of regions for all the cloud and AI infrastructure is very risky. And in this context, India offers scale, political stability, and a rapidly improving digital backbone. And from an infrastructure perspective, it's a rare market that checks many boxes at once. Now, with that being said, there are some obvious concerns that many people are talking about. And that's the issue of high electricity and water usage, something that India is already very short of. Globally, data centers consumed about 415 terawatt hours of electricity in 2024. And by 2030, that number is expected to more than double, largely driven by AI workloads. In India specifically, electricity used by data centers is expected to rise from under 1% of national consumption to around 3% over the next few years. Then water is another pressure point. India is among the most water-stressed countries in the world. But despite these concerns, having a large number of data centers is actually net positive for the country. And let me tell you why. Firstly, because when these big tech companies set up their data centers here, it will force the government for massive infra upgrade. Simply because these data centers require reliable round-the-clock electricity. And that will push the states to invest in grid stability, renewable capacity, and transmission infrastructure. Also, many of these data centers projects are explicitly tied to solar solar, wind, and energy storage investments. In other words, data centers will directly or indirectly make many clean energy projects economically viable. In fact, India's total electricity capacity recently crossed over 500 gigawatt, and more than 50% of this capacity is actually coming from renewable sources. The same is true for water. Modern data centers increasingly use closed-loop cooling systems, recycled water, and air cool designs. And these technologies don't get adopted at scale unless there is a pressure to do so and data centers will create that pressure. And finally, data centers will create an ecosystem of new jobs in the country. 
नेटवर्क इंजीनियर्स साइबर सिक्योरिटी प्रोफेशनल्स क्लाउड आर्किटेक्ट सिस्टम एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स हार्डवेयर मेंटेनेंस पावर मैनेजमेंट कूलिंग टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दीज आर लॉन्ग टर्म हाई स्किल्ड जॉब्स विच विल बी रेलिवेंट फॉर मेनी इयर्स एंड फाइनली देर इज ऑल्सो स्ट्रेटेजिक एंगल टू इट इफ इंडिया वॉन्ट्स टू प्ले अ सीरियस रोल इन द ग्लोबल ए आई इकोनॉमी इट कैनॉट जस्ट बी अ टैलेंट सप्लायर इट नीड्स डोमेस्टिक कंप्यूट बेसिकली यू कैनॉट ट्रेन सॉवर इन ए आई मॉडल्स रन लार्ज स्केल पब्लिक डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और होस्ट ग्लोबल क्लाउड वर्क लोड्स इफ योर डेटा लिव समेर एल्स these data centers will immensely help india in its trillion dollar digital economy and both the government and our big companies understand this which is why we are seeing massive investments happening in this sector sure there will be challenges of power water government support but that should not stop us from being a part of the most important tech revolution of today's time all right next up india just unveiled dhruva 64 the country's first fully indigenous 64 bit microprocessor and it's a big statement that india wants to build its own technological foundation instead of depending on foreign processors for everything from critical infrastructure to everyday devices so what exactly is dhruva 64 it is a 1.0 gigahertz dual core 64 bit processor designed and developed entirely in india and this is done by the center of development for advanced computing under the national microprocessor development program in simple terms moving from 32 bit to 64 bit computing means systems can process far more data run more complex software and support modern application that today's digital economy demands and this puts Dhruva 64 in a completely different league from the older chips India relied on earlier and what makes this even more important is the architecture it's built on Dhruva 64 uses RISC5 an open source processor architecture that allows countries and companies to design custom chips without paying licensing fees to global giants so in a world where a handful of firms control most chip designs this gives India flexibility control and independence and this matters because India is one of the world's largest consumers of microprocessors yet almost all of them are imported and this dependence became painfully clear during global chip shortages when supply chain disruptions slowed down entire industries and dhruva 64 is a step towards reducing that risk it gives india the ability to design test and deploy its own processors all right moving on to some quick news updates dairy brand eggos landed in controversy after a viral youtube video claimed that the brand's eggs contained nitrofurin residues a banned antibiotic which is linked to cancer now eggos pushed back immediately saying its eggs are safe and even shared their nbl aggregated lab report showing that the residues were within legal limits and now the fssai has stepped in as well asking its regional officers to collect both branded and unbranded egg samples and send them to labs across india for independent testing all right next up indian vc firm special invest has launched a new 1400 crore rupees growth fund focused on deep tech startups and it aims to back companies that have moved past the lab stage and are ready to scale commercially the fund plans to invest 5 to 8 million dollars per start up across areas like space tech advanced manufacturing energy storage quantum computing health tech and defense sectors where there is a big gap in late stage funding and now let's quickly talk about ipo e-commerce enabled startup ship rocket has filed their drhp with sebi as they plan to raise 2342 crore rupees in their ipo the issue will include a fresh raise of up to 1100 crore rupees and an offer for sale worth about 1242 crore on the other hand insurtech startup turtle mint has received sebi's approval to go ahead with its ipo and they are planning to raise 2000 crore rupees from the ipo All right, now let's move into the funding news segment for today's video. This week, Indian startups raised a total of 146 million dollars, which is significantly higher than last week's 86 million. And now let's look at some of the companies that have raised funds this week. The first one I want to talk about is Bengaluru-based space tech startup Digantara, which is like an air traffic control for space. It tracks satellites and space junk so they don't crash into each other, and gives government and operators a live Google Map style view of what's happening above Earth. And they have just raised 50 million dollars in their Series B round. Following that, we We have a Gurugram based startup called Tagbe and they are like a team you would call if you want to turn an event into an Instagrammable experience. They basically mix storytelling, design and tech to build digital museums, experience centers and smart city control rooms for government and big brands. And they have raised 10 million dollars. Following that we have a Bengaluru based EV startup called Obin Electric which makes electric motorcycles that feel like proper 125 to 150 cc petrol bike but with lower running costs and no tailpipe emission. And they have raised 85 crore rupees or 9 
1.42 million dollars in their pre-series B round. Next, we have Pune-based Quintrans, which is developing advanced electromagnetic linear motion systems. Think of them as rails plus motors that move things in a straight line very fast, very smoothly, and with hair-thin precision. And they have raised 750 thousand dollars in their pre-seed round. And finally, we have Bengaluru-based biotech startup called Cellarim Lab, which focuses on cell-free biomanufacturing, which means instead of growing living cells in big fermenters, they use engineered enzymes in a control setup, convert sustainable feedstock into high-value ingredients. And this makes production faster, cleaner, and often more consistent than traditional fermentation. And Cellarim Labs is selling these ingredients to beauty and personal care brands, helping them reduce dependence on imported actives. And they have raised 6 crore rupees or 660 thousand dollars in their seed round. Alright, that's all the startup news I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.